responded really well to these videos talking about the rulers of the houses and how to connect them to use your birth chart to predict your life. So I wanted to do a video that is also really helpful on how to figure out what streams of income are present in your chart or how to use astrology to see how to make money because each of our charts tells a story around income and what areas of life are connected to that. And there's a beautiful sunset going on, which I will show like after and during, and it's providing some really nice light, and I need to get this video out before the natural light leaves. So we're gonna get right into it. If you've not already seen my videos on predicting love and how you're going to meet your relationship, or my video on predicting career and what work you should get into, feel free to watch those as well. I will link them down below. This one, we're going to talk about the second and eighth house and the way that those rulers are placed. So reading a chart comes from seeing the houses, the areas of life, identifying the whole sign house, and seeing where the ruler of that house is placed. This will connect one house with another house and allow for a story to form. So the second and the eighth houses in the chart deal with money, income, and finances. The second house is our direct income and spending. On a day-to-day -day level, how do you make your money? How do you spend it? The eighth house is our investments, our assets, and our more long-term goals around finance and the way that we're set up more long-term. It's things like your stock portfolio, your crypto holdings. If you own art or any jewelry that you see as an investment, that can be the eighth house, as well as taxes, loans, debts, and money you owe to other people. So any planets in the second or eighth house can describe that situation for us. If you have Venus or Jupiter in the second or the eighth house, it can show a strong financial set up either around income or around your investment portfolio versus if you have Mars or Saturn it may show either more challenge or more conservative mindset that you have around these things and it depends on your chart whether or not this is like challenging or really constructive for either of these for example if you have Venus in a night chart that's going to be more positive Jupiter in a day chart that's going to be more positive Mars in a day chart is going to be more challenging Saturn in a day chart is going to be more challenging so the first step that you can look at for or the second and eighth houses is seeing if you have the more uh, growth oriented planets or the more challenging planets in them. I work literally in finance. A lot of my career is around predicting crypto events and I have Mars in a day chart in the eighth house. So it doesn't mean that you're doomed or making no money, but it can show a certain amount of challenge in that area of life if there is a, a presence of the malefics. So that's the first step. See if Mars or Saturn, Jupiter or Venus are there. That's gonna give you a little bit of an idea of the energy in that area of life. Then you can look at the signs of the second or the eighth house. If you have, let's say, a mutable sign, mutable signs are the transitions between seasons. They show going from one energy to another. Mutable signs are adaptable, changeable, and get bored easily. This will likely show different levels of streams of income and a bit more of a tendency to have side hustles or multiple ways that you're making money rather than one. It can also show a very diversified or very all over the place portfolio of investments. So if you have a mutable sign as your second and eighth houses, you're generally going to have more side hustles or streams of income that prevent you from having one thing. Then if you have a fixed sign as your second or eighth house, you're going to have more stable, steady streams of income that do line up with one area of work or investing. If you have a cardinal sign, it's going to show more going after something, getting tired of it, going after something, getting tired of it, rather than having a mutable sign, multiple things at once. Cardinal signs start things and then delegate them to other people to finish or to continue. So it's a different energy. Cardinal signs are generally staying in one career, but it's different tasks or ways of earning money over time that you're starting and then delegating on rather than a fixed sign generally being more stable. Now, I do wanna note as well that if you have like me, I have Uranus in the second house. Uranus is a planet of chaos and volatility. So even though I have a fixed sign, Aquarius in my second house, uh, it does show that even though I'm making money in like the same way generally, astrology readings and trading, um, it, it does show that my finances, the way I spend and make money fluctuates wildly depending on my life month to month. I mean, I can go from like, very much money to like the negative. Like that's very common for me, frankly. So if you have Uranus in these houses, it can show volatility. If you have Neptune in these houses, it can show a little less clarity and a little more of a spiritual energy to there rather than being like, this is my budget. You're like, Jesus take the wheel kind of energy, which can be positive or challenging. And Pluto shows intensity and sometimes a huge amount of something. It can show destruction or a huge, huge amount. It can be fission or fusion, depending on what it's placed with, but it intensifies whatever it's with. So those are the first two things. The sign, that's the vibe. 
then, and also like I have an Aquarius second house, I work in like tech and a little bit of a more inventive, or I don't wanna say I work in tech, but I work in crypto, which is a technology. So it's like, you know what I mean? Um, the sign of the second or eighth house can show the vibe as well. A Gemini second or eighth house is gonna get bored easily and be like, I want all these different mental ways of making money. A uh, Taurus second or eighth house might be like, I wanna work with my hands. I wanna work in a product based industry. So look at the sign of the second or eighth house for the vibe and the duration of your income kind of ways. Um, and then look at any planets there for any details about how you make your money. I wanna clarify planets in a house versus the planet ruling the house. Planets in a house describe detail about that area of life. The planet that rules that whole sign house and its condition describes the overall outcome or way that it pans out. So planets in a house are more minor details. The planet ruling that house and how it is placed in its condition will tell you the final outcome and the area of life that it is connected to. So the next thing we're going to do is look at the planetary ruler of the second or the eighth house. I'm just gonna do the second house to start and then I'll do the eighth house in my own chart to explain that second. So I have Aquarius in my second house, whole sign house. Saturn rules Aquarius. Where is Saturn in my chart? It's in the fifth house of creativity. So it's showing that my second house of income is tied to creativity. I create fucking 15 second and 15 minute videos and that is how the rest of my income comes in. I don't make that much off of social media unless I have a brand deal, I'm making very, very little, which is pretty normal unless you're having like 10 million plus viewers a month, I would say it's not really a living wage. However, that is my way of then earning how I make my income and I could see this growing over time to me making enough through videos alone to not really have to do other things in my life even though I do enjoy them. So look at the second house, identify the sign, what planet rules that sign, not planets in the house. I wanna be really clear. When I'm talking about planetary rulers, I do not give a shit about planets in the house. I do not care that Uranus is in my second house. I'm not looking at that right now. I need to find the planet that rules Aquarius. What is that in the traditional rulerships that I use? Saturn, Saturn's in my fifth house of creativity. Uh, the fifth house is also dating or romance, but I, I've never had a serious relationship, so I've never had anyone provide for me financially. Um, in fact, I was the one fucking spending five figures on the Burj Al Arab for the boyfriend I had for a week, like a year ago, but that's a side note. Uh, anyway, that, that's, if you want to go back in those videos when I'm like having the time of my life, uh, whatever, stupid, stupid. Um, anyway, so that's my second house. Let's do it for the eighth house. My eighth house is Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. So the eighth house of investing is ruled by the sun in the ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. I have not fully found this yet, but I do believe that a lot of my investments will end up being in international companies or emerging markets because that's honestly what I would do aside from like crypto, which is already just showing up in my eighth house stellium opposite Uranus, which shows chaos and volatility. I would say that having the eighth house ruler in the ninth house shows that investments and value comes from looking in other markets. And I've had much more financial success when I do any business with other countries. Anytime I like, like I was in uh, Berlin and Athens a lot this summer, literally anything I started or began there investment or company wise blew up significantly more than anything I began here in New York or whatever. Um, and that astrophotography is involved in that, but definitely shows that my eighth house of investing is lining up with my, or is, is uh, the ruler is in my ninth house of foreign travel and higher education. I also have something called mutual reception where the ruler of my eighth house is in the ninth and the ruler of my ninth house is in the eighth. So Mercury rules Virgo, it's in Leo. The sun rules Leo, it's in Virgo. This shows a really strong connection between the two, which I think just further exemplifies. Also investing in my education early on was like really, really important for everything. I love, loved NYU, I loved NYU. I think that the philosophy department taught me literally how to think in a way that was constructive now for videos, making arguments, etc. So that is the two houses and seeing where the ruler is placed will allow you to delineate it. So look at the sign of the second or eighth house, identify the planet that rules that sign, see what house that's in. That is how for the second house, you're making your direct day-to-day -day income. And for the eighth house where you might have your investments or longer term assets tied into. I do wanna clarify as well, the career houses versus the money houses, because not everyone's career is going to be their main source of income. So if you're looking at where your 10th house or where your midheaven ruler is from my previous video, that might be different 
than where your second house or eighth house ruler is. Because of this, it might show that you have a career in one industry, but it's a certain part of that industry that ends up being your income stream. So for example, I have the ruler of my midheaven as Mars. My midheaven is Scorpio ruled by Mars. It's in the eighth house of investing. So for me, it's fairly simple that it shows career showing up around money or around finance. If you have your second or eighth house ruler in the 10th or near your midheaven, it is pretty clear that the way you have your day-to-day -day income is probably the way that your job is like providing for it. That's clear. It does not mean that you have to make money in a totally separate way if your second and eighth houses are not connected to your 10th house, but it might specify the role or the department that you're working in in that industry that does create your career, as well as you might get money from inheritance or from a partner more than your career, and you may not even have a career that involves making money if you work as like a stay-at-home partner that kind of thing or raising the family so I hope this helps clarify this was a fast video I got a lot of uh, a lot of info in I know people are gonna complain about me speaking quickly but I have a lot of videos to get out before natural light dies down and I think it's better for you to turn me on to 0.5 speed than have some bitch who takes fucking forever to like talk and to say things I get so fucking annoyed at slow talkers and just slow like the videos Unless you're Ben Shapiro, I have you at 2x speed. If you're Ben Shapiro, I have you at 1x speed or 1.5x speed. I don't watch him. I don't watch any political commentator, but if I'm playing, like, I watched his interview with Lex Friedman. That is a phenomenal interview. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of a fit check um, because I have not done one in a while and uh, I need to get dressed and a little bit ready for what's coming up. I'm not actually gonna show my shoes because I don't feel like putting them on because I have a reading in a little bit and I don't want to put shoes on before my reading. But um, I got a couch. By the way, I got a couch. I need to reupholster it with blood fabric, but the couch is really pretty. So um, these are, let's put this, this here. This is my outfit. It is this like, I don't know if I've showed this in a video before, but it is this shirt and these pants. I know it's black, oh no, but like with my red jacket, it's a red look. Um, a little bit of black is fine for me, obviously, because you can't wear like 100% red. But, um, okay, this isn't really showing it as well. Let's put, let's put this on this and then walk over here. And now my camera's upside down, but okay, we're good. So this is the set. Um, it has like flame pants and it says hot stuff or something like that. Um, my stomach hurts like shit. I literally thought I was going to have my appendix ripped out this morning. I was taking a solid core class. I'm like, I just shout out because even if you're thin, like you still get bloated and I'm just wearing this fucking anyway out because I don't like I don't have time to care about that. But just reminder that even if you're thin, like you get bloated. It looks weird. It looks like distended stomach heat, but something is up. I don't know. Maybe just weirdness related. Anyway, the sunset is beautiful over here. Let me just show this. I should take pictures in this actually like ASAP. Ugh, but I don't have like time. Uh, maybe we just run a little bit late to this event. Anyway, hope that you enjoy this. Uh, that's about it. Shit.